So we're very close to showing the formula that we want to show. Just before we get there, let me just point out that distributivity works on the left, but it also works on the right. So in the previous part of the video, we saw this example here, which is left distributivity. So when the dot product is on the left of the addition, and we saw how uh, A dotted with B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. Now let's consider this example where uh, the dot product is on the right of the addition, right distributivity. Does the law still hold true? Is it true that if you have A plus B dotted with C that this is A dot C plus B dot C? Well, the answer is yes. The dot product distributes over vector addition, whether it's on the left or the right, and you can show this quite easily. We can apply commutativity to say that this is equal to C dot A plus B, and we can then apply left distributivity that we looked at in the previous part of the video to say that this is equal to C dot A plus C dot B, and then we can apply commutativity again to change C dot A into A dot C and C dot B into B dot C, and then we've shown what we wanted to show. So distributivity works on the left and the right. So we now have all the machinery that we need in order to show our formula. So let's take two vectors now, A and B, that we're going to dot product, and let's write both of them as linear combinations of the standard basis vectors, the i, j, k basis vectors. So here we have vector A, which is a1i plus a2j plus a3k, and here we have our vector B, which is b1i plus b2j plus b3k. So we want to dot product A with B, so we've just inserted the vector A here, which is A1i plus A2j plus A3k, and we've inserted the vector B here, B1i plus B2j plus B3k. And it's important to realise that each one of these is a separate vector. A1i is a vector, and then the overall vector A is made by adding A1i to A2j to A3k. So the fact that this truly is vector addition here, we're just saying that vector A is equal to the sum of these three separate vectors, means that we can now apply distributivity here. So I've applied right distributivity here to write this as A1i dot producted with all of this thing here, B1i plus B2j plus B3k plus this bit dot producted with this bit, so A2j dot producted with B1i plus B2j plus B3k, plus this one dot producted with this, so A3k uh, dot producted, it should say there, B1i plus B2j plus B3k. So let's now think about what each one of these three dot products is going to be equal to, starting with this one at the top. So we want to take the dot product of this vector here with this vector here. Now let's think about the definition of the dot product. So we want the length of this vector here. Well, this vector here is just a1 times the uh, i unit vector. So it's just a vector that's in the same direction as this i unit vector, but of length a1. So its length is quite clearly going to be a1. So we start off by writing a1 here. And then we want to multiply that by the length of the component of this vector that is in the same direction as this vector. Well, this is easy. This vector consists of this bit, which is the component in the same direction as this one, plus these bits, which are completely perpendicular to the i vector. So the j and the k components are completely perpendicular to this. So this bit counts for absolutely nothing. This isn't going to contribute any length in the direction of i whatsoever. So all we need to know is what's the length of this bit, which is the component of this entire vector that's in the same direction as this one. Well, again, its length is going to be b1 because this has length 1, times it by this scalar b1, that's the length of this overall component that's in the i direction. So that means that all of this dot product here is just a1 times b1. Apply now the same logic to this second one. So we want to take the dot product of this vector with this vector. So we want the length of this vector. Again, this is just a vector in the direction of j of length a2. 
so its length is going to be equal to a2. And then we want to multiply it by the length of the component of this vector that's in the same direction as this one. Well, this bit counts for nothing because it's perpendicular. This bit counts for nothing because it's perpendicular. So this is the bit that's actually in the same direction as this. And this has length b2. So we're just going to have a2 times b2 is going to be the value of this dot product here. And then you apply the same thing here. We want the dot product of this vector with this vector. So we want the length of this, which is just a3. And we want to multiply it by the length of the component of this that is in the same direction as this. This bit and this bit are completely perpendicular. So we just want this bit. This bit has length b3 in the direction of k, so it's a3, b3, and that is where this formula comes. That is why the dot product of a with b is given by a1, b1, plus a2, b2, plus a3, b3, where these numbers are the components of the a and the b vectors as linear combinations of this standard basis of perpendicular unit vectors. Note this would not work, this argument that we've just given would not work if it were not for the fact that these are all unit vectors and they are all perpendicular to one another. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you found it interesting.